Hello everyone, this is Reach with the Sky. Thank you very much for your positive response to the Warship History series. I'm pleased with it, um, and I'm pleased that you're pleased with it. Uh, it's by no means over, but the first quote-unquote chapter is done. That's the Japanese battleships. You may have noticed that certain videos um, weren't made for specific ships like the Miyogi, uh, the Amagi, and the Izumo, although those were folded into other videos because they were just too minor to uh, have their own videos, essentially. Apart from the Miyogi, which I didn't really cover in the Congo video, but the, I don't believe there's any information about it. Not that I could find anyway, so that's that. Glad you've enjoyed it so far, and I'm pleased to announce that I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, but that's where you come in. I'd like to ask my subscribers and my viewers where you'd like the uh, Warship History series to go next. And by that I mean which sort of class of ships you'd like me to cover next. Um, I do plan on doing them sort of sequentially, as in, in World of Warships terms, um, because that allows me to focus my interest in my sort of source gathering and finding, and I can use information that I found in the next video, because there is some overlapping and crossover, especially in the in the uh, sort of background portion of the video, politics and economics and that sort of thing, which doesn't come up a huge deal in the videos, but it is an important part of the background. Not so much economics, I was just thinking of the whole Japanese situation with the 8-8 fleet program and how much strain that put on the economy, which I did cover a little bit. But politics came into it as well, of course, you know, war and politics go hand in hand. But um, what I'd also like to announce is I have plans for two kind of sister series um, an equivalent to the Warship History series for armoured fighting vehicles, so tanks, uh, you know, APCs, IFVs, tank destroyers, all that sort of thing. Not necessarily just World War II, but post-war as well. Um, and another third series about planes, military aircraft, from, I don't know if you know, World War II onwards. Because I would like to cover post-war vehicles, it's not something I've done a great deal on my channel. Um, of course, the the uh, the link wouldn't really be to World of Warships with either of those two. Well, it wouldn't be at all because they're not ships. But um, to be honest, as you may have noticed, the the link to World of Warships was very loose anyway with Warship History series, and I did that deliberately um, because not only do I not play a great deal of World of Warships, but um, I like my my sort of history, um, and I wanted the general history theme to be approachable by any and all watchers, not just video gamers, but also people interested in history, in military history. And I want that same theme to permeate most, if not all, of the videos I make in the foreseeable future. Not necessarily all of them, of course, I might throw in a bit of gameplay now and then, but I don't really play a great deal of, well, video games. Um, I do play them, but I don't play World of Warships a great deal. Um, I've been playing quite a lot of Armored Warfare recently, which sort of may come into the the tank history series, but only in a, f a handful of screenshots. It's going to be history and sort of educational videos, really. But yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, and you know, you're, whether or not you're a World of Warships player, because I realise most of the people that have subscribed in the last two or three weeks are because of my posting of the videos on the World of Warships subreddit, and lots of my older subscribers who are fed up with my very haphazard routine of, you know, randomly up uploading videos here and there. Um, I'm not going to make any promises of a schedule because I can't really work like that. Um, I could, but I'd probably just end up slipping out of it. That's just an unfortunate habit of mine. I sort of work piecemeal on things until the final product is all comes together and I upload it. Um, so, yeah, if the equivalent series to the ship series in tank form or plane form appeals to you. Excuse me, just sipping my tea as I seem to happen to do while I film these things quite a lot. Then, yes, I, I'm happy to announce that I do plan to do that. Um, I think I'll continue to use still images more than footage because, well, for a couple of reasons, footage is um, quite hard to come by in comparison at least public domain footage. I mean, there are lots of public domain footage, uh, public domain photos, excuse me, 
um, that I can use without copyright claims popping up. But footage, footage is usually claimed by someone, either you know a network or the person that took the footage. Um, and of course, video massively increases the size of the file, so it will take a lot longer to upload, which is a problem for me because my internet isn't fantastic. And of course it takes a long time to render compared to still images. Well, I don't have a bad computer by any stretch of the imagination, but even like a 15 minute video with only still images, like the amateur video, that takes some time to render. So it makes me th it makes things more streamlined, and I don't, I don't think footage is necessarily necessary <laughs> for, to make an, an interesting video. Uh, as you may agree, if you enjoy the Warship History series, maybe you think that would be enhanced by video clips, but uh, I don't know. I think still images can get the message across. It's all about the narration for me. I write the script for those videos and read it out. Uh, the amateur video was 3,000 words, the script, which I wrote and read out. That's quite a lot. Of, that's a large portion of the work. Um, that's where most of the time goes in, actually absorbing the information that I search for in my sources and quite often Wikipedia. I will admit I use Wikipedia, I'm not ashamed of that. But I do look at the sources the Wikipedia uses directly. Um, cut out the middleman, so to speak. Um, and I partially regurgitate that, but in my own words. So it is original in that sense. I don't, I don't claim to have discovered the information that I use, you know, I'm not a source in and of myself, but I, um, I credit the sources I use in the, in the bibliography and the video description, um, and I'm happy to continue to do that. So, yeah. That's about all I wanted to say, I think. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment as to what type of ship you'd like me to cover next, although I will say now that I don't I don't think my next video will be a ship video. Um, one of my problems is I have quite a short attention span, which partially explains, if you look at my video history on YouTube, my videos, they're sort of all over the place. I struggle with doing the same series for a long period of time, because I just, in the end, it feels like I'm making even though I'm not making the same video over and over again. It almost feels like that, you know. And unfortunately, I, I have quite a short attention span. I get bored with things. And uh, that's no excuse for not making videos, of course. But it has prevented me from finishing things. Because, you know, I have a driving passion to do something. I can feel it with the Warship History series already. Like the Congo video, I really enjoyed making that. I really blasted it out in two or three days. Fuso video was not much different. The Nagato video, I felt myself beginning to wear out a little bit. And then the Amateur video, um, partially because of the fact it was the Amateur that kept my interest because, you know, the Amateur is one of those one of those things that really has sort of a special place in military history because it's, uh, or at least, you know, Imperial Japanese Navy military history because it's quite special. Um, but I could feel my interest slowly waning, which is why if you look at the release dates of those four videos, Congo and Fuso, or Fuso. Um, I don't think Fuso has the little wiggle above the I, above the O, so it's just Fuso. Um, although I may be completely wrong, I'm going to look that up right now. I like to get things things right. Okay, Fuso does have the little wiggle above the O. I don't know the Japanese name for that character, but Fuso. Tea. Um, cup of tea. Yes, Nagato, and then the gap between Nagato and Yamato was quite large, and that's, I admit, slowly diminishing interest in the subject matter. Or at least the vid- no, not, no, that's wrong, not the subject matter itself, um, but the making of the video, the whole process, the whole writing out and filming and recording. Um, not that I don't enjoy these videos, it's a passion of mine. The history itself is a great passion. Video making, not as huge a passion, but I still enjoy doing it. But the key to that is where I've completely sidetracked and gone off in a, on a tangent. What I'm saying is, I don't plan on making the next video another Warship History series because I can feel myself starting to slowly lose interest in making these, investing time and effort into these videos. So what I'm going to do is either make the next video a fighting vehicle history series, which is I think what I'm going to call that group of videos, and the warplane history series. That's the two names for those two projects which will uh, accompany the Warship History series, and by the way, the Warship History series can and probably will cover ships in the post-World War II era, 
and perhaps pre World War Two, you know, pre World War One even, because you know, Congo and Fuso are World War One era ships, really, that were just modernised quite extensively. So I could go pre nineteen hundred, maybe a warship history series on the on the Victory, HMS Victory, something like that. Um, but yeah, the same thing c can be done, and I hope will be done by me with planes and tanks. I've barely covered planes on my channel. A few old World War Thunder videos and a couple of um, modern day... I did, I did a video on the MiG-21. I can't remember what the game was. One of those sort of uh, arcade-style jet plane games. I can't remember the name of it. But um, yeah, the next video will either be tank or a plane video. I haven't decided which. Probably a plane video, just because going back to the whole short attention span thing I haven't done a plane video in a long time um, and that sounds appealing to me maybe probably a post-World post -World War 2 plane um, because that's something I haven't done in a very long time and I've only done once with the MiG-21 so I realise this has gotten a little bit rambly as my talking videos tend to do so if you've got through to this point thank you very much for listening and if you skip to the end or sort of got bored the first couple of minutes in which I don't blame you if you did that I'll just put a comment in the video comment section or just fill in the description with the main points and what I would like to get a response from you in regards to that. So what ships, planes, tanks you'd like me to do little mini documentaries on. So that's about it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for all your subscriptions, your positive comments, your likes and uh, I hope I continue to earn those from you, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. This has been Rich with the Sky. See you later.